Welcome, Namaste, and welcome to Dr. Shah's Clinic. In this video, we're going to discuss on the clinical topic azoospermia, which also means no sperm count seen in the ejaculate or nil sperm in the ejaculate. Now, men with azoospermia are usually seen in about 10% of patients who actually visit a fertility clinic for evaluation. And azoospermia as a clinical condition affects about 1% of the global male population. Now, if you look at the image on the right, under a typical uh, microscopic field, if you have about 13 to 15 spermatozoa per high power field, that's about 13 million per ml and it's considered normozoospermia. That means the man has a normal sperm count. On the other hand, in men who are azoospermic, if you look under the microscopic field, you will find no sperms. There will only be round cells, there may be a bit of debris, but nothing more. So men with azoospermia are truly infertile because there is a major problem with sperm production. Now, what are the causes of azoospermia and what are the symptoms of azoospermia? We will first discuss on the symptoms of azoospermia. Now, men with azoospermia and not all of them, remember, some of them will report having low amount of beard growth, low, a small amount of density of hair in the moustache and the beard will be less. They will have less hair distribution in the chest in the inguinal region that is near the penile, near, near the penile area. They will have less underarm hair. They may be slightly obese, they may be taller and uh, also they may report problems with erectile function, generalized decrease in mood and desire and they may also notice that their organ size is very small. More importantly, their testis will be very very small. Some of the men with azoospermia will also have what's called as a firm soft peanut sized testis and in these men we have to rule out what's called as Kleinfelter syndrome. Now while these are the symptoms of azoospermia, Remember about 40 to 50 percent of men will not have any symptom at all. And most of them will be sexually active, they will be very sexually normal, they will be having a very normal family life but the only thing, the only reported symptom will be that okay I am not, I'm not able to, I am not able to get my wife pregnant and that's usually the common complaint with which they come to the clinic right. So they are unable to father a child in the first, second or third year of marriage and then when we do a semen analysis they are detected with no sperm in the semen, also called as azoospermia. So these are the symptoms of azoospermia. Now, if we discuss on the uh, causes of azoospermia, the causes can be simplified into two categories, right? You have obstructive azoospermia and you also have non-obstructive azoospermia. And a third category is called as borderline azoospermia. So again, if you look at the image on the right, patients with obstructive azoospermia will have a block somewhere in the male, male reproductive system. The block can be at the level of the vas, it can be level, it can be at the level of the ejaculated duct, the block can be inside the testis, and the block can be at the level of the reti testis, it can be you know anywhere at the level of the epididymis, so they can block. So because of the blockage, the sperms are not able to come out in the ejaculate, and this is called as obstructive azoospermia. In these men, the semen volume will be low. So a very important factor here to bear in mind is if you notice that your semen volume is low and your semen ejaculate shows no sperm. It could be obstructive azoospermia, right? The next type of azoospermia is non-obstructive azoospermia. Again, if you look at the image on the right, men with the non-obstructive azoospermia, there's a problem in the hormone production. So the two main hormones or the three main hormones for sperm production is FSH, LH and testosterone. FSH and LH is produced in the brain from the pituitary, testosterone in the testis. And all three hormones are important for normal sperm production. So in men with non-obstructive azoospermia, what basically can happen is either these hormones are very low, they are not produced or the hormones are excessively produced and the testis is dysfunctional. So the testis is not taking in the hormones and putting the sperm to zoom out. So this is another cause of azoospermia. A third type of azoospermia that we see is called as borderline azoospermia. Here the hormones are normal but what happens here in these cases is that make this at the level of the testis, there can be maturation arrest or hypospermatogenesis. And we discover this uh, histopathological diagnosis when we do a testicular biopsy. You know, we'll get back get back to that during the treatment discussion, right? When we discuss all the treatments of azoospermia. So when you do a testicular biopsy for these men with borderline azoospermia, everything will look normal. There'll be no sperms in the ejaculate. The FSH LH is normal, but during a testicular biopsy, we discover borderline azoosperm, we discover what's called as maturation arrest or hypospermatogenesis and these are genetically mediated and that's very important to note here. 
how do we treat azospermia? Now, the treatment of azospermia depends purely on the cause. Now, if, if it's an obstruction that can, get, that can be repaired, we try to fix the obstruction. But remember, most obstructions cannot be repaired. So what we do in these men is, we retrieve sperms directly from the testis. The chance of retrieval in obstructive azospermia is almost 100%. It's a very good chance of the man having his own biological child. So we can retrieve the sperm from the testis and then fertilize the egg using ICSI, as shown on the image on the right. Now, with, however, with the non-obstructive azospermia, there's a 35% chance of retrieval. So there are 100 men with non-obstructive azospermia, there's a 35% chance of retrieval. That too, only after giving him medication. So we give a pre-medication course, you know, to op optimize the chance of sperm retrieval from the testis. And then we, you know, kind of do a sperm retrieval. Now, is there any medical management for azospermia? Yes, it, for non-obstructive azospermia, where the FSH and LH is low, in a condition called as hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, we can give FSH and LH injections combined with HCG injections and bring the sperm production back into the ejaculate. And that's why the diagnosis of azospermia is very important. So once the, if a patient has true hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, we can give FSH and LH injections and you will, the man, the individual will have, you know, his hair will start growing, his moustache will start growing, his organ will become bigger in size. Uh, you know, the male pattern of hair distribution will set in and he will also see sperms in the ejaculate. And it's possible to, you know, actually help him father a child uh, naturally or through assisted reproductive technology in a far easier manner. We don't have to go to the testis to technically remove sperm to zuba from his, from his testis. That's possible. So there, this medical treatment is possible. In other instances where we have tried uh, treatments for men with azospermia, we have usually given letrozole therapy along with uh, an extract of Nucona prurians, and here we have seen good results. Good results in the sense about 35 to 45 percent of the time. Say, I, I say, if we give the treatment protocol to 100 men, we have seen sperm to come into the ejaculate. So azospermia, there are you know a variety of treatment strategies and approaches depending on what's causing the azospermia, right? So azospermia is Ultimately, the take-home point here is that azospermia is definitely treatable, but of course, in certain scenarios, for example, if the man has Klinefelter syndrome and say the, you know, the testis is very, very small, right? In these in individuals, it would be very difficult to technically retrieve sperm. So the testicular size, to some extent, allows us to predict, to some extent, whether we can, you know, actually retrieve sperm. This, the testicular size, along with the FSH and LH values. So, within men who are basically azospermic, what we have to do is we have to clinically work them out, categorize them as obstructive, non-obstructive, or borderline, and then take a choice on whether we want to try medical treatment, whether we want to give injections, or whether we want to go for sperm retrieval, and, you know, depending on what's the cause of azospermia. And the technique that we use in the evaluation of azospermia is something called as testicular mapping. And in testicular mapping, what we do is basically we draw a GPS map of the sperm production in the testis, and uh, what we basically do, the testis has multiple quadrants, right? So you have two testis. The testis can be divided into 9 plus 9, 18 quadrants, on, including both sides. Fluid is aspirated from each of these quadrants, put on a microscope slide, and sent to the histopathologist. And in whichever quadrant does sperm production, from there we can take a, do a directed sperm retrieval. That is, in azospermia, especially non-obstructive azospermia, there's patchy sperm production, right? There may be sperms in one or two of the quadrants somewhere in the testis. So we do a directed sperm retrieval where we can detect the sperms and take it directly from there. So there are a multitude of treatment strategies and that itself is a separate video topic. So I hope this video you know, gave you some information on azospermia. So this video in this video, to summarize, you know what's azospermia now. You know there are three different types of azospermia. You know the various treatment strategies of azospermia. You also know the symptoms of azospermia. So, if you have difficulties and if you notice that you're suffering from these issues and if you suspect you have azospermia, the wisest thing to do is to visit your nearby andrologist, do a semen analysis, get a hormonal analysis, figure out why you are azospermic in the first place and then take treatment at the earliest because azospermia is a true cause of infertility. I hope you, uh, I hope you liked the video. Please like, comment and subscribe and share this video with your friends. Of course, we are relevant and I'll see you back soon with other, some more videos. This is Dr. Shah signing off for now. Welcome and Namaste.